I'd just like to, again, thank you for this contribution. It's extremely helpful. I want to move to just a couple of final points that I want clear in my mind. I want your I want to take from your comments arising from what Senator Ringett asked that we've been exploring through this hearing the opportunity that may exist for Canada for innovation if we get this right. Mm -hmm. Can you succinctly tell us what you think that opportunity is? Well, I think there are two aspects to this. One is the pure research and technology innovation capabilities that might exist in the Bitcoin sphere. One of the things I like to emphasize is that Bitcoin is not just money for the internet. And to look at it simply as money for the internet is to miss the point. Bitcoin is the internet of money. Currency is just the first app. Currency is an app running on a decentralized trust network based on the blockchain technology, which means that many other apps will exist. The Bitcoin currency is almost the same as email was in the 90s. It enabled the growth of the internet. It was the killer application that made it viable and worth, worthwhile for people to get involved. But it couldn't possibly open our eyes to the, to the endless possibilities that came afterwards. The web, we couldn't envision that in the early 90s, or even Facebook and things like that today and Twitter. So, Bitcoin, the currency, is just the tip of the iceberg. It is the proto-technology that really brings this decentralized network of trust to consumers. But there will be other apps, and it is already evolving at a tremendous rate. So, From a pure research and innovation perspective, I think it is incredible. The other thing is to think about the possibilities of extending banking services. And even though Canada uh, has a highly banked population, there are still pockets within this country. I know that in the U.S., close to 18% of the population have very limited banking capabilities. Um, and that is probably true of most developed nations. There are pockets within this country where people have very little access to banks. I think the combination of um, doing primary research and innovation in these new technologies, and opening banking to reach uh, different corners of this country, and disadvantaged parts of the population. That is a very potent combination, especially if we take advantage of the international aspects of this currency. Thank you very much. And one last question, if I may, Mr. Chairman. How did New, how did New York State get it wrong? I think they got it wrong in, in many ways. First of all, um, by rushing to regulate very soon, but more importantly, by regulating Bitcoin in exactly the same way that the banking system currently operates, and failing to see the distinctions between Bitcoin and the current system. I, the only analogy I can think of is if in the proto-internet, the Federal Communications Commission in the uh, United States had decided that the internet was simply a sophisticated form of CB radio and required a license from every website operator. And such an outcome would have almost certainly destroyed the internet industry in the US. However, because of the enormous need for such a tool, it would not have affected the internet industry everywhere else. It would have simply pushed that innovation elsewhere. I think treating Bitcoin as a proto-bank account with some fancy features is to miss the point. And regulating it then as such completely stifles it. It puts it immediately into the playing field of incumbents. It ties them up in the same kinds of regulations. And it forces us to behave more like a bank, when its unique characteristic is that it isn't a bank. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.